Good morning, everyone. Welcome to all who've come to worship with us today. And our service is being led by our minister, Reverend Liz. Thank you, Liz, wherever you are. <laughs> and it will include Holy Communion, and Brigade Enrolment and Presentation Awards. On Monday, the Brigade meet at six o'clock. On Wednesday, the 18th, it's coffee and chat on Zoom, 10.30 to 11.30. On Thursday, it's tea, toast and talk, 10 till 12. Next Sunday, the 22nd, there will be no service here. Um, we're going to join with, Beth with Doddridge at Bethany next week. Birthdays this week. On the 17th, it's Christine Margetts. On the 20th, it's Mercy's. And on the 21st, it's Emma Watson. So we wish them all a very happy birthday. Just got some. The food bank are doing hampers for school families and local families this Christmas and would like to wrap something for the families. Please can we ask for selection boxes, shampoo and shower gel for children, teenagers, ladies and men. Thank you. And two short extra notices the ride and stride we raised 350 pounds so thank you to everyone who took part and everyone who sponsored <laughs> and this week we are beginning to wrap the christmas presents so if anyone would like to come along on monday uh, we're going to be wrapping them from 10 till 11.30. And on Tuesday, it's going to be the same time, 10 till 11.30. And if anyone is not keen on wrapping, there will be gift tags that need writing. So all help will be very welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Roz. This morning is a service of celebration, a service of communion, a service that has a little bit of most things, I think. Um, so today there will be movement, there will be um, some action songs, there will be some presentations, um, but before we come to all of that, I think we should just pause for a moment as we think of all that is going on, on the, in the Gaza Strip and also in other places in the world. So I'd like to just begin with a lament with the state of the world, which is written by Elizabeth Gray King. creator and energy of all life. We cry to you with terror of living, the injustice, the pain. We read of idols, of false gods, of fake news and shallow lives. We hear of destruction, which people claim comes from you. People are hungry, poor, selfish, in pain, and hungry for peace. We despair and are overwhelmed. We're confused beyond our limits. And yet, O oh God, we've always trusted you. We can name times that you settled our minds and calmed our hearts. Our shelter is because of you, and our deepest self has been touched by your presence. Our living has been blessed with your spirit and path. So Lord, come to us in our complex and unsettled self. Invite us again to know your grace and generosity. Restore our awareness so we can hear pain and share hope. 
resurrect us again in confidence. We praise and we trust you. Give us insight into how we can help other than holding the situations in prayer. Give us courage and action, creator and energy of all life. We praise you. So here we are, Lord, your people, your church, meeting together in your presence. We welcome each other and we welcome you. Make yourself known to us in new ways through our worship, through our prayers and through our understanding of your word today. Amen. So I'd like to invite you to stand as you're able and we're going to sing together, My Jesus, My Saviour. of Jesus Christ was commissioned by its Lord to go into all of the world and make disciples of all nations. The Boys Brigade is part of the church and rejoices that it is called to share in this task and in particular to give nurture to the boys and girls of the company and to present them with the claims of Jesus Christ. Today, the leaders of our company have come to pledge themselves afresh to this work. So let us therefore commit them to Christ as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we thank you, Lord, that in every generation you entrust young people to the care of your church and call those who are to exercise in ministry among them. Grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, those who pledge themselves afresh during this service today may be enabled to fulfil this task through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing my favourite, one of, well, one of my favourites now. So I'd like to invite anybody who would like to come and join me up here. We're going to sing My God is a Great Big God with the action. So if anyone wants to join me, please come and join me. I'm not going to do this on my own. Come on. Ruby, Ruby. So, can we remember how it goes? Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Holds us in his hand. He's higher than a skyscraper, deeper than a submarine, wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. Now, this is a bit that I get wrong all the time. Now, it's either he's known me and he's loved me since before the world began, or it's he's loved me and he's known me. I'm not quite sure which way around. Which one is it? No. No, no. Known me and he loved me since before the world began. How wonderful, How wonderful it is <laughs> to be a part of God's great big plan or something like that. Okay. So, are we ready? On your feet.
Thank you very much to all those who helped us with our actions. So the BB, we're at the beginning of a new session, sort of. I know we're a few weeks in now, but we're practically at the start of our new session. And all of us have new phases in our lives, don't we? We have maybe, I don't know, we're starting a new school year. You start a new job, maybe. You might start first time, first day of retirement, where you think, oh, how am I going to fill my days? And then suddenly, oh, I'm busier than I was when I was at work. There's always a new beginning. We can always start again and start afresh. And today, we start afresh as our Boys Brigade and Associated Girls. And because of that today, it's a good time for us to be able to just pause, to reflect, to realign ourselves with what God has got planned for us and for others. It's a time to make a new start. We're going to hear in the Bible today, through a storyteller Bible, about somebody. Somebody who came from a very dysfunctional family. There was jealousy. There was hatred. There was favouritism. All in a very extended family. Can anyone guess who we're going to be hearing about today? Indeed, Joseph. So Joseph was pretty arrogant about being the favourite son. And it didn't earn him any favours with his brothers. He was sold into slavery. He was accused of rape. He was thrown into prison. Joseph had many new starts. New beginnings in his life. But through it all, Joseph learned to trust God's plan and to put God first. So we're going to hear about Joseph in three separate stories. So Lynn's going to come and tell us the first part of the story. Joseph the dreamer. Jacob had 12 sons. That's right, 12. His favorite son was Joseph. Jacob spoiled him and gave him special gifts, like a beautiful coat decorated with many colors, reds and greens, blues and yellows, purples and pinks. Joseph was bright as a rainbow and proud as a peacock. Joseph's older brothers did not like this one bit, but what they hated even more were Joseph's dreams. I had a dream last night, boasted Joseph. Oh no, groaned his brothers. I dreamed that we were all bundles of wheat, and guess what happened? Your bundles of wheat bowed down and worshipped mine. And I had another dream, Joseph bragged. Go on, his brother sighed. I dreamed we were all stars, and guess what? Your stars bowed down to mine, just as if I were your king. It didn't take long for Joseph's brothers to grow tired of this, but that's no excuse for what they did. The next time they were out of Jacob's sight, they grabbed Joseph tore off his coloured coat and dropped him down a dry well. They were just about to kill him, in fact, when they spotted a cloud of dust at the edge of the hill. It was a band of traders bound for Egypt, their camels loaded with goods for sale. Why should we kill Joseph, asked one of the brothers, when we can sell him to these traders and make some money for ourselves? He'll be sold as a slave in Egypt, and his foolish dreams will never come true. Twenty pieces of silver. 
That's how much the traders gave them for Joseph. And when the traders had gone, the brothers ripped up Joseph's coat, dipped it in the blood of a goat, and carried it home to their father. Joseph is dead, they told Jacob, and they showed him Joseph's coat, its long sleeves shredded, and its beautiful colours smeared with blood. Jacob wept and wept, and Joseph wept too, as the traders carried him far from home. Okay, when you arrived this morning, uh, hopefully you all received a piece of Play-Doh. Super. So, this piece of Play-Doh, I'd like you to make something out of it. It can be anything. It could be something from a holiday you've been on. It could be to try and make your family pet. It could be, you can make... Use your imaginations. You can make whatever you like. I'm not very good at imagining things, so I usually just do a snake. Snake, sausage, or because it's orange, it could be a carrot. You know, so make yourself something out of your Play-Doh. So I try and be a bit more inventive than a carrot. Okay. Um. How are we doing? Have we got some decent shapes? Have we got some attempts at shapes? Fabulous. Right, well, my little bit more inventive shape is a snowman. Because I love building snowmen. I think I love building snowmen because then I get so cold I can go back inside and have a hot chocolate for my snowman. Right, what else have we got? Janet, what have you made? Oh, oh, the tree that's in the middle of Adrian's wall that's been chopped down. Yeah, that was quite sad, isn't it? Pauline, a duck. Fantastic. That's really good. A star. What have we got down the front here? Brooke, what have you made? A ball. Oh, a A what? A ball. A ball. A ball. So the kids are used to me not being able to hear a word. Right. Have you made a it up back into a ball. Sorry if you were really proud of your little... Uh... Okay. Now I want you to make something else out of your ball. But perhaps that something else might be something that you think's not great about the world. Something that's not too great about the world. bit more difficult this one isn't it oh 
Are we doing with our shapes of something that we is not great about the world? I've made a gun. Because I don't think... Oh, snap. Oh, we've both got orange guns, Alan. And another gun. We've got lots of guns. We don't like guns, do we? And a bomb. Bombs, guns, bad things. Excellent. Tommy's got a gun too. Okay, things that we don't like about the world. So what else have we got? in the world at the moment I want you to screw it up into a ball because now last time I want you to make something to show the last thing that you did that perhaps you shouldn't have done it's going to be hard to do this with a, with a bit of <laughs> With a bit of Play-Doh. The last thing you did that perhaps you shouldn't have done. Or perhaps something you should have done but didn't do. So I'm going to put phone one of my friends. Because I haven't spoken to them for a long time. So that's a really good phone, isn't it? This one takes a lot more thought. Right, you're going to see what we've got some ideas. Okay.
thing is that when we pray and we ask for forgiveness, bang, we get back to the start again with our ball of Play-Doh. So we're going to hear the next part of Joseph's story. Joseph has had loads of new starts, fresh starts in his life, but they don't come easily and not in the way you expect to hear them. So Jason. Joseph the prisoner. When the traders took Joseph to Egypt, they sold him to one of the king's own soldiers, a man, a man named Potiphar. He was kind and Joseph worked hard for him. So hard, in fact, that Potiphar put Joseph in charge of all his other slaves. Potiphar's wife, however, was evil and cruel. She told lies about Joseph and had him thrown in prison. Things looked bad for Joseph. It seemed as if his dreams would never come true. But God was watching over him. One morning, one of the prisoners said, I had a dream last night, a strange dream. I dreamed I saw a grapevine with three branches. Suddenly, bunches of grapes burst out of those branches. So I squeezed them into a cup and gave it to the king to drink. I wonder what it means. Joseph listened to the dream. God listened too. Then he whispered the dream's meaning, meaning to Joseph's ear. I know what it means, said Joseph. Before you were sent to prison, you served wine to the king. Well, in three days, you will be set free and serving wine once more. That's exactly what happened. And when the wine server was set free, he promised to help Joseph get out too. Two long years went by. Then one morning, the king of Egypt said, I had a dream last night, a strange dream, and I can't work out what it means. A dream, said his, wife, said his wine server. I know a man who can tell you about all your dreams. And straight away Joseph was brought from the prison. I was standing on the banks of the river, the king told Joseph, when I saw seven fat cows walk up out of the water. They were chewing happily on the grass when seven other cows joined them. These cows were bony and thin. Instead of eating the grass, they ate the first seven cows. But they stayed as skinny as ever. What can it mean? God whispered into Joseph's ear. Joseph listened. Then he bowed and said, Your Majesty, for the next seven years, Egypt will grow many good crops and be as fat as those first cows. But after that, for another seven years, hardly any food at all will grow. So unless you want your people to look like those skinny cows, you must store up food in the good years and use it wisely later. The king was so impressed with Joseph's answer that he not only let him stay out of prison, he put him in charge of, sort of storing and saving and serving out Egypt's food. Seven good years were followed by seven bad. And after that, the king, Joseph became, after the, after the king, Joseph became the most important man in Egypt. It was like a dream come true. very much. How many of you use a 
diary. Yeah? Okay. How many of you use a diary that is um, paper-based? Yeah? How many of you use a diary that's electronic? How many of you have a wall calendar? Oh, whoa. Oh, that was... Now, that is interesting. That was... So, we had... A few had a paper diary. Very few had electronic diaries. Nearly everybody had a wall planner. A wall calendar. That's amazing. So, don't know what that was. Many apologies. But when you have a diary, you fill it up with your life, don't you? you fill it with all the different things that you're going to do. And if you're an electronic diary, this is not going to work for you as, a, as an illustration. So I do apologise. But you fill up your diary, you fill up the pages with all the different things, the people you're going to see, the places you're going to do, the meetings you've got to be in, and your old diaries end up looking a bit worn and wear. Not very nice. Sorry, Ellie, I know that's your old diary, so I do apologise that it doesn't look very nice, but it doesn't look very nice. Spine's all broke, things around here, lots of stuff that's irrelevant now, really. I don't know about you, I get excited about stationery in particular, but about new diaries. That clean page, that fresh start, that clean slate. I actually found this one, which I think I probably bought to give to Ellie for Christmas in 2022, and he never arrived there. But you know, you open up your new diary, you start in a fresh, it's really exciting, and if you start in something new, like a new diary or a new notepad, you have to have a new pen as well, because it's all about the new stationery. And you, and you just, there's something about, oh, you can hear it squeaking, is it? It's brand new. The pages, oh, the pages are fresh. Smells lovely, of fresh, wonderful. Oh, it's quite good, it's got recipes in this one. It's, oh, it's just lovely. And to look ahead and to find blank spaces, the whole future ahead, with no plans, but this diary, this diary is full of things like holidays, meeting with friends, celebrations, coffee meetings, work meetings, unexpected things unfortunately, like funerals, emergency dentist appointment perhaps, deadlines that need to be met. And this one, this empty one, would have eventually ended up like the old one, full of memories, full of routines, full of surprises, full of shocks. And our days are in God's hands if we trust God to guide us, to fill these places. these pages with a fresh start, a new beginning, just like we did with our Play-Doh. Is this off complete? How's that? Any better? Any better? Yeah? Super. So I'll say that a little bit again, if I can remember what I said. That these pages our fresh start. The same as with our Play-Doh when we scrunched it back up and it was just like it was back at the start again. It's a new beginning. We each have the opportunity for a new beginning. So when you've done something that you shouldn't do, like hide under the bench, Ruby, or be grumpy, and miserable and cross with our grown-ups. We know that we can say sorry to the person we've done it to, but we can say sorry to God as well. And it will be forgiven and forgotten. Just like our Play-Doh.
One of the things that we can do when we come to a place where we can say sorry and something we need to do as soon as we say sorry is we can come together in and share communion together. And that's something that we're going to do today. We're going to come and share communion with each other. We're going to remember that all are welcome. We're going to, before we take communion, we're going to have a time to say we're sorry and to start again. So as we prepare for communion, a very small, a very short communion song will be played. Elders, if you would, those who are serving would like to come on up. Youngsters, if you would like to come and sit on the floor down here. Not yet, we'll do it, Esther. Come and sit yourselves down here on the floor. You can leave your Play-Doh where it is. It will still be there for you when you come back. Communion will be slightly different today. The elders are going to serve most of you, I'm going to serve the children at the front and just talk a little bit about what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, okay, so again, we're slightly different to usual today. So play dough down then, folks. Come and sit yourselves down on the little ledgy bit at the front here. Would Elliot and Oscar like to join us at the front? Thank you, Vinny. Well done. Harrison, come on. Good chap. Yeah. Super, Elliot, that's it. Brilliant. Sit yourself on the ledge. Harrison, are you going to sit with Ruby? Or are you going to sit with Max? It's up to you. There we go. Super. So come, come everybody who wants to. Come if you can recite the creeds. Come if you can't remember the words to Jesus loves me. Come if you've been to church since birth. Come if you've lost your way a few times but found yourself here today. Come if you like to study theology and come if you like to finger paint. Come if you like tradition and ritual and ceremony. Come if you like balloons and laughter and jumping in muddy puddles. Come just as you are, every single one of you, old and young. We come together as one family right now. This looks like bread, and it is bread. But God is really imaginative. There's a surprise in this bread, for within every single crumb of this bread, God has folded nothing less than heaven. And when we break it and everybody has a piece, what we're doing is saying, let's share the story of Jesus. Now this, this looks like a goblet of wine. And it's not a goblet of wine, it's a goblet of red drink that we call communion wine. But God being God didn't leave it there and he said that he had squeezed every single drop of a promise to us all into 
this red liquid. And then when we pass it amongst ourselves, every single person can have a taste. And it whispers to our souls and tangles with memories, remembering that God loves us. That God loves you and that God loves me. So on the night that Jesus and his disciples were sitting in a room, they were having a meal and there was a table laid out a little bit like this, but would have had lots more food on it and chairs would have been all around it. Or well, they might have been sat on the floor. We we'll have to think about that, won't we? And one of the disciples, Peter, started telling them about how he felt when he stepped out of the boat and then the water went right up to his middle. But Jesus walked on the surface. And Peter tried to do the same. The water went to his ankles, to his knees, to his thighs, to his waist, to his middle, and then right up to his neck. Matthew and Andrew, they told stories too, but then Jesus interrupted them and said, look, here's a story that I need to tell you. So he lifted up that bread that was on the table where all his friends were gathered. He paused and everybody became silent. They listened and he said to them, this bread, this bread is the most important reminder that you have of me. And I want you to remember that, more than these stories. This bread is an image of my body. I break it to show to you that my own body will break. I want you all to break this bread so you all know what's happening to me and I want you to do it regularly, reminding yourselves of me every time and what I've done for you. Dying because I love each of you so much. The disciples, his friends, were just speechless as Jesus passed that bread around because they didn't understand, just like we don't understand either. Then while the bread was passed around, Jesus lifted up the goblet and he held it midair. And again, everyone fell silent. This wine, he said, it's another reminder of me. But it's a symbol of my blood that will be spilled when I die. But don't be afraid because tucked within it is a promise. A promise that I will be with you always wherever you go. I will never let you go, my friends, because I love you so much. So much even death cannot separate us. So again, Jesus passed the wine around them all. They took a sip and still none of them really understood, just like none of us could with honesty say that we completely understand. So today we're sharing that very same meal that Jesus shared with his friends, the disciples, all those years ago. Remembering the stories. All of those stories of Jesus that remind us how much he loves us. How much he loves you. How much he loves me.
So as Jesus lifted the bread, all were still, and silence came over the table. And Jesus said, this is bread is my body. Eat it, all of you. And just as Jesus did, we share the wine. So when Jesus lifted the goblet, silence came over the table. Jesus said, this wine is my blood and within it's a promise. Drink it, all of you. So we have been refreshed by the blood and wine of Jesus. The promise to each of us that he is with us always. A place where we can go for a fresh start, a new beginning, the slate wiped clean. Amen.
So I've done things slightly out of order today. I wanted the young people down the front for communion without their little packages that they are receiving. So our um, awards for our BB juniors and anchors shall... Um, we do it up here or do you want to do it down there? Down there, um, yeah. Right, BB, can you come and sit on the very, very front pew? That would be wonderful. So anchors by Lynn, Junior's the next. Brilliant. We'll try and go through this quite quickly, folks. I'm very aware of the clock. That's it, leave them down there, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, so, um, Lynn, do you want to say a little bit about the new badge system? What do they have to do? Four areas, five areas, active, Bible, craft, creative, and another. And each age group have to do so many of these things within each of the categories across a session to be able to get their badges. And they will also, obviously, in the number of years they get, they get a service badge as well. So um, we're going to present them with their badges, which is from last session. And then we start afresh with giving the young people their membership cards for this session that's coming, or that we're in already. So, we're going to begin with the juniors. Okay, so when you hear your name, if you can come up, okay, and you're going to come and shake my hand, so your right hand, you're going to shake your hand, my hand, okay, shake Lynn's hand, and then she'll give you your badges. Just, badges. Just badges at the minute, yep. Yeah. So who've we got so. first? So Brooke. So Brooke has earned her bronze award and her two years service award. So well done, Brooke. So shake mine. Perfect, brilliant. Well done. Excellent. Brooke particularly likes the creative part. She's very, very good at art. So it goes itself back down where you were. Wonderful. And Ruby, fabulous. Ruby, well done. Thank you, Ruby. See, Ruby's got her, some of hers on her arm already from previous years. Ruby has her bronze award and her five years service. So that's fantastic. Well done, Ruby. Ruby likes to help our anchors because we haven't got enough leaders. We have all ages from four all the way up to 14, all in one session. And uh, Ruby's great. She loves, loves to help the anchors as and when they need a little bit of gentle guidance. You can open them, yes, if you want to. Okie dokie. So Robbie. Robbie's somewhere. Robbie has earned his silver award and he has... Six years service. So that's brilliant. Well done, Robbie. And we've just changed things with Robbie slightly. Robbie has one-to-one. -one. Uh, I'm now working with Robbie on one-to-one. -one and it's fantastic that we, we're, we're sitting down and we're doing activities. There he is. Well done, Robbie. Good chap. I'll give it to mum. So well done, Robbie. So that's a junior. Yes, we also have oh yeah, some who aren't here today. Then Vinny. Well done, Vinny. Vinny is was an anchor last session. He's now gone up to the juniors. You wouldn't believe it, would you? <laughs> Into the juniors. And Vinny has his red badge and his four years service badge. So that means you must be eight then. Yes. Well done, Vinny. And he also gets a certificate to say, congratulations, you've made it out of anchors into juniors. You've survived anchors. So well done, Vinny. Sorry, 
Okay, so we go to our anchors. Our anchors, are we any of the anchors here? Um, no. Yes. No, but I mean for awards. No, that's it. No, okay, so none of the anchors are here who were with us last session. They have come back after summer. Uh, one family do attend church elsewhere, so we knew they wouldn't be here. Um, but that's fine. So I think we'll give, a, give them all a round of applause for what they've achieved last session. <laughs> Fantastic. And then we're starting afresh. So lots of new things to tick off on our sheets, lots of new activities to try. And to start us off, we need to be members, don't we? So our membership cards. So first of all, we have Harrison. Come on, Harrison. That's it, good boy. Well done, do that one. Use that hand to that one. That's it. Brilliant. Good boy. And you're going to see Lynn. Harrison has just started school, just started anchors, and loves it. That's it. Good boy. Well done. Let's give you a clap. And Max, it's one for you again. Max has just started school, haven't you, Max? That's it. Max has just started school as well and just joined us at Anchors. He has a great time. That's it. Good boy. Let's give Max a clap. And Vinny. So, Vinny, a fresh start. It's not been the best fresh start, has it? So, should we have a new fresh start tomorrow? Brilliant. So, Vinny, here we go. Thank you. Remember what you just said, fresh start. Good lad. Big clap for Vinny. JJ, you too. We've not had the best of starts, have we? But we're going to be much better, aren't we? New start tomorrow. Awesome. Well done. Brilliant. That's your membership card. And Amelia. Wonderful. So Amelia's just joined us new this year. So well done, Amelia. It's lovely to have you on a, on a Monday night. There's your card, well done. Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. She hates it when I do that. So, well done, thank you. You carry on being you, my lovely, okay? Super. And Brooke, super. And Brooke, likewise, continue being yourself, okay? Fresh start tomorrow, be you, because you're awesome, as you all are. Well done. Thank you. And Robbie's. Robbie's fresh start. And it certainly has been a fresh start. I, this session, um, we're seeing a different Robbie. It's... it's um, it's been wonderful, wonderful. I'm thoroughly enjoying working one-to-one -one with him. So, um, so that's brilliant. So well done, Robbie. <laughs> Super. Please pray for these young people and pray for us leaders. You will probably have seen the... We've got half of our brigade here today. We've got all of our leaders. You've seen the 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 depth on and range of children that we have at brigade uh, including the extra additional needs so if you do know of anybody who can come and help us we would really really appreciate it um, so we're going to have the leaders come up and do their renew their vows to continue the work that they're doing and then we're going to have a very very small presentation to another young man who has done something amazing. You've got to get up, Cheryl, yeah. Jason, Lynn. Would you like to face your, your brigade and your congregation? Okay, so guys, what's happening now is these, your leaders, are going to commit to carrying on 
organising and doing activities with you on a Monday night. Okay. So leaders, we're going to we're going to respond with with God's help. We will. Okay. So leaders of the First Northampton Company of the Boys Brigade with Associate Girls. You've been called by God to the work of caring for and training the boys and girls of our company. Will you, by your work and example, seek to advance Christ's kingdom and work in partnership with the church to share the gospel of Jesus Christ? With God's help, we will. Will you, by prayer and personal preparation, seek to equip yourself in every way possible for this service? With God's help, we will. May God give us grace to be faithful to him and successful in our work for him throughout the brigade. So, members of the brigade, would you like to stand up? Fabulous. And you're going to say at the very end, a very loud, we do. Okay? So, as members of the brigade with associate girls... You're part of a whole worldwide family. Do you promise to be a loyal member of the brigade and to support the activities that are put on for you week by week? A big loud. Awesome. So may God help us to keep our promises. Give us strength to overcome temptation and to be loyal to our great captain and our saviour, Jesus Christ. Finally, I have one more question. Members of the brigade, would you turn yourselves around and stand facing all the lovely people out there? So a question for you. Your answer, I hope, will be we do. So, do you promise to support the work of our company of the Boys Brigade with Associate Girls and to pray for its leaders and the boys and girls that God will keep them sure and steadfast in their faith? So, let us all pray. Yeah, I thought that as well. I'm going to do that again. Do you promise to support the work of our company of the Boys Brigade with Associate Girls and to pray for its leaders and the boys and girls that God will keep them sure and steadfast in their faith? Much better, wonderful. So let's pray for the brigades. Oh God, the brigade, we pray for the brigades. Give to it greater power to advance your kingdom throughout the world. Grant in your mercy that every member, past and present, may prove steadfast in their fight against evil and true in their allegiance to you. Help us in times of temptation. Make us strong when we are weak. Give us courage in difficulty, faithfulness in duty, loyalty in friendship. And finally, by your mercy, bring us into your everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brigade. So I have one more presentation to do. And this presentation, uh, we had at our celebration um, service with the other nine churches when we came together as the Northampton Area Churches Partnership. Um, a gift was given to Tommy by the uh, moderator. That came from National Church House. That was for the idea that Tommy had last year for buying blankets to keep the children warm um, who uh, received food hampers from us. And Tommy did most, most of it himself, the wrapping particularly, if we remember the pictures of him wrapping lots and lots. Well, our synod was so impressed by Tommy that they've sent me a letter and something for Tommy. And it says this. Hi, Tommy. Congratulations on receiving the Lundy Memorial Award. I know it happened a little while ago, and I'm really sorry that it's taken me a bit of time to arrange the enclosed gift for you. It's in recognition of the award and as a thank you for the great work that you did to continue to be part of the mission of God, demonstrating love and care to other people. 
I was really inspired by what you did and was delighted that you received the award as it allows lots of others to also hear about what you've been doing and help inspire other young people too. Thank you so much for being an inspiration and keep up the good work. Every blessings, Richard. And Richard's our new Children's Youth and Development Officer and he sent that through to me. I have had it for a little while, but I told Tommy he wasn't allowed it till he came to church. Bribery always works. So, Tommy, would you like to come up and receive your... your it looks like it's an Amazon voucher. So, you can be, that'll be spent by this afternoon, won't it? Yes. So, let's give Tommy another round of applause. Come on up. Well done, my lovely. Well done. You really deserve. Right, welcome for coming up. What are you going to spend it on? Peekaboo. Peekaboo? What are they? Uh, right, within the prize, Tommy also received £100 that I think should have come to church. Yes, it has, super. That's for Tommy to choose what he'd like to spend it on for the young people of the church. And I think that he's looking at, is it sensory toys? Possibly. We'll, we'll know. But we'll let you know. We'll keep you posted what he's decided to spend the £100 on. He did think he could keep it for himself, but I said it got into the church bank account. Okay, so we're going to go and into our short time of prayer before we sing the song that I'm sure you all know what we're going to end with. Any ideas? I can't go for it really loud. Okay, absolutely. So let's pause. We'll do the collection during the... Um, Drawing, will your anchor hold? So let's pray. Living eternal God, your name has been honoured through generations of praise and worship. Salvation declared, your name adored by many voices in many different ways. And we add our voices. We thank you. We thank you for all that you do for us, for joy which defies description which wells up from within to give you thanks and praise. Your love lo knows no limits and we thank you for the joy of our faith, the laughter at the heart of creation, the joy of knowing that despite all else, we belong to you and are yours now and forever. We're surrounded by conflicting voices pulling us every way, by contradictory voices so that your still small voice is drowned out. Our faith can be blunted, our vision can be blurred, but to help us to listen for your voice, then to proclaim your invitation of mercy and grace to a world that worships many idols. Lord, invade your church, that it may become what you want. We pray for people today whose lives are focused on the wrong things, who are racing against the clock and would love to have time to focus on you. We pray for those who devote their energies to the pursuit of false gods, seduced by money, fame and power. We pray for people whose lives are disintegrating through no fault of their own, who are out of work, who are wearied by the demands that are put on them by work and family or by lack of money. We pray for those who are worried, distraction about illness, who are full of sorrow or under constant strain. And we pray for those in our prayer book. We pray for Fred and Pauline's daughter Liz, who's having an operation on Tuesday. Lord, we pray that you will be with her and with the surgeons, and with Fred and Pauline as they await news. We pray for Rod and for Glenys, And Lord, we pray for those who we've not mentioned, but who we may know of in our hearts and in our minds, who are in need of your prayers, of your love, of your affection, enabling them to start again. And Lord, we pray for all the young people here this morning, and we thank you for each and every one of them, created in your image. And Lord, we just pray that each of them will leave this place today 
proud of what they have achieved over the last year, looking forward to achieve more in the year to come. God of peace, come to those who we've named, and with your blessing, we give them that peace which passes all understanding. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we come to our final hymn. Let's stand and sing nice and boldly. Will your anchor hold? <laughs>
So go now rejoicing always in the Lord. Stand firm in Jesus Christ and be of one mind in him. Always act with justice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone and yield up your worries on the altar of prayer. So may God give us peace beyond all past all understanding. May Christ Jesus guard our hearts and our minds and may the Holy Spirit plant within us all that is honourable, just and pure. We go in peace to love and serve our Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>